So hi, everyone. Is the mic working? Can you hear me? <laughs> I guess that's a no. <laughs> so I'm Nicole, and I'm a UIX designer. And I'm really glad to be here to talk about designing great progressive web apps. So progressive web apps let us deliver intuitive web experience experiences on a mobile device. But before I start, I just want to refresh your memories a bit and remind you what makes an app a PWA. So first, a progressive web app is engaging. Users are more likely to reuse a progressive web app. That's because it's installable to the home screen, and people can get, get back to this app from push notifications. So that's why it has increased conversions and engagement. A progressive web app is fast because it loads quickly and performs smoothly throughout the user experience because of service workers and the best practices for performance. A progressive web app is progressive, which means it works anywhere, everywhere, and you can enhance this user experience for devices that support this, enhance, uh, this advanced features. So hence the term progressive enhancement. A progressive web app is connectivity independent. So this means not only it works offline, but it also works with low-end internet connections. So building progressive web apps is so exciting, but most developers are not really aware of the importance of user experience in a progressive web app. So what is our biggest challenge, challenge nowadays when we're building and designing a progressive web app? It's this word, app. We need to put this app in progressive web apps. So this is why I'm going to give you some tips to create progressive web apps with app-like experiences and ensure, ensure a great user experience in your pro progressive web app. So the first tip is to follow native-like patterns. Your app should meet your user's expectations as if it's a native app. So this means you should design more native-like elements. Because it's a common mistake to design overly web-like elements, because we're doing a web app. So what do I mean by native-like and web-like? So here's a very, very simple, basic example. You would use big buttons and big inputs for a native app, whereas in a web app or a website, you would use small inputs and maybe links. So we shouldn't be looking for actions on a, on a native app or on a progressive web app. They should be big and clear. So we should be designing native-like patterns like this one, things like empty states. Empty states are a beautiful way to show that there is no content in a non-disruptive way. So instead of show showing a just a blank page, an empty page, without anything when you have no data, we would show something like a message with a beautiful icon or an image and how, how we can make this empty page uh, more loaded. So we could show an, an action or a button or something like that. Another thing to do to make na native-like patterns is also using system fonts. So using system fonts has a lot of benefits. Your, your user will feel more like home because they like using a native app and it improves performance. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean use system fonts for all your text in your app, but maybe you could use brand font for your headings and everything else could be system fonts. Now, what do I mean by system fonts? I'm not saying to use Comic Sans or Arial or Helvetica. <laughs> I'm just saying to maybe tweak the app's style to match the user's operating system. So if on, uh, on iOS, you would use San Francisco. On Android, you would use Roboto. So what if we can do that? Well, we can. We can add all fonts of devices possible, all the system fonts available, and the browser will use the first font that is available. So let's say the user is using an Android, it will, the browser will read Roboto and just ignore everything else. So it's completely weightless. So this is a nice approach to, for progressive web app, not just for design user experience, but also for performance. So you would have this. You would have San Francisco on iOS, for example, and Roboto and Android. And this is what Booking.com is using nowadays, and Medium as well. But I think Medium changed that. It's a shame. So another th thing to do to create native-like experiences is the ability to have 
to undo actions. So this is another great way for your progressive web app to feel native and real instead of web-like. So what I mean by this is that instead of deleting something and giving an alert, are you sure you want to delete this, why not just delete it and then give an undo option as a toast message and keep it for a while, if it works for your app. Now, to keep these things in mind, to always keep in mind that we need to design native-like and app-like experiences, you could browse UX inspiration from native apps. So I would use something like patterns.com, which is a great collection of native-like designs and patterns. Another way also to keep these things in mind is to level up your familiarity with material design. Material's design system and patterns offers us things like interactions, animations, colors, design principles even. So users expect design and interaction to look native and feel native. So if we can use this material design principles in our progressive web app, we would really create beautiful experiences. And to make sure this happens in your project, you could use libraries. So let's say you're using no framework at all. You would use material design components for the web, or MDC. If you're using um, polymer, you would use polymer paper elements in your, as a library. If you're using Angular, you would use Angular Material. And if you're using React, you would use Material UI. So ma no matter which framework you're using, you could add some libraries to create things like ripple animations, cards, buttons, grids, and use the material colors, things that, things that you can implement directly in your project. So the next thing I want to talk about is giving your app a brand. Progressive web apps allow us to give a brand to our app through the app manifest. So what is the app web app manifest? It's basically a file that describes your web app to the browser. So what's inside this manifest.json? We have a list of things. We have the names, the theme colors, the orientation, things like that. Now let's focus on this theme color. The app theme color is this color that gets on the status bar and the header when you access the app from the home screen. So let's repeat that. So it colors both the status bar on the top and the header in the task switcher. But there's another theme color. The, no the other theme color is the browser theme color. So this is the one you see when you open the app from the browser before you add it to the home screen. And how the way to code this is actually just adding a meta tag and adding the theme color and the, the value in the content. So this is the other theme color that we need to know about. Now let's also talk about the icon. <coughs> your app icon should work in different sizes. Don't forget that your icon will be on the home screen, on the splash screen, on the task switcher, inside notification banners, and, and the app install banner as well. So all of these things. So we need to make sure that your app icon is working in different sizes, and especially in small, small sizes. So try to create an, ic an icon that is simple, it has a unique shape, and it's, it, look good in, it looks good in small sizes. Also, your icon should be adaptable on all platforms. So your progressive web app can be accessed from any browser, any device. This means each platform has its own design guidelines. For example, as you can see here, on iOS, we have a solid background, whereas on Android, we don't have a background. It's transparent, et cetera. So the best way to make sure we have adaptable icons on all platforms is to use a generator like realfavicongenerator.net. So in this generator, you would see all of the variations of the icon in one go, and you could also change uh, the icons for each platform. You would upload different images for each platform. And then it generates a manifest.json for you. Another nice way to, uh, to make sure your app icon looks nice is to create a light version for it. This applies if you have a native app that's already in the store, and you're creating a progressive web app for it, a lighter version. So you would create a light version of this icon by inverting the, the, the colors of your icon. And this is what, what Instagram and Twitter are doing. In their progressive web app, they have the inverted icon, which clearly states that this one is the progressive web app. So the next thing I want to talk about is adopting an offline-first strategy. 
So progressive web apps let us lo uh, load our app instantly and perform fast and connectivity independent. So our goal is to provide a good experience that lessens this impact of change in connectivity. So here are some tips to make sure you're adopting an offline first strategy. And most of these are taken from Google Web Fundamentals. So first, clearly inform the user that a change in, con in the con internet connection had happened and what they can do about it. And do that as soon as possible. So you seem to have a bad network connection. Here's what you could do. You could send these messages, and we will send them when the internet is back on. So inform what actions they can do and what happened. And when they're back online, you could add either a tap to refresh button, or you could maybe automatically refresh. So it really depends on the, the type of app that you have. For example, here we have an article, and we're reading. And if their internet went offline, they're still reading. If you auto-refresh, then you would re lo lose where you were reading last. So that's why here we add a tap to refresh button, because it makes more, much more sense. And if your app relies on too much data, then you could provide a data saver mode. So if you add a data saver mode, you, you could maybe not load the images and the videos and the heavy data and only load them when the user clicks on them. And this is what Twitter Lite did. And they actually reduced data usage by up to 70%. Also, when you have media like video, it really makes sense to give the user con control to download for offline use. And this is what Biograph Progressive Web App is doing here. So you have a Make Available Offline button. I would also add to make sure you add the size of the file that you're downloading. It's really important to have that as information. And for an even more intuitive user experience, you could give an offline mode color to your theme. So giving an offline mode color, like a gray, for example, would visually communicate to the user that your app is offline and without saying anything, basically just doing that as a, as a background color. So an app that lessens this impact of network failure will really feel magical to the user. Giving immediate visual feedback is also crucial for the user experience of your app. It can really make a great impact on the performance. Why? Because actually 53% of mobile users abandon sites that take longer than three seconds to load. You've probably seen this before, but I'm showing you this again because our users' time is precious. And actually, the sad part is that most websites take longer than three seconds to load. So other than the technical stuff that you could do, like making your images smaller or using system fonts, we could also use some UX techniques to make our app appear faster. So here's a rule to always keep with you. Every action need a reaction. Never have an action without an opposite reaction to it. So this is a common UX principle, but it's especially valid for mobile, and it's especially for web apps. Now, visual feedback is translated through many different ways. It could be something as simple as a button feedback, a change of background color, or a ripple effect, or a box shadow. It could be also something more advanced, like micro-interactions these pretty micro-interactions that can greatly enhance your user experience. And we probably all know what website uses this one. So we're all geeks here. So that's with Twitter. <laughs> and another way is also to use progress bars. Now, progress bars or loading spinners are used for more like downloading stuff or loading a whole page. We can also combine these two and use animated feedback. You could combine micro-interactions with progress bar to have a beautiful animated feedback. So these are small patterns, but what about how you load an entire page or an entire app? Now, a great way to load a progressive web app is using progressive loading. Let's take a look at the difference between these two types of loading. So I'm going to hit Enter. So even though they are taking the same time to load, to finish loading, which one feels much, much more fast? It's the progressive loading. That's because as soon as I hit Enter, 
immediately I start seeing some components loading on the screen. Whereas the normal loading, you would wait for all the components to load until you see them visually. So this progressive loading reduces the user's uncertainty and actually reduces the perception of time. It feels like it's faster, but it's actually the same time loading. So how can we do that in our progressive web app? We can use the app shell model. So an app shell is the minimal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that powers a user interface. So from this example that we just saw, this is our, our app shell. And there are some common elements that most progressive web apps use as an app shell. So we have a nav bar, a tab bar, or if you have a burger menu, then you'd have the burger menu. <coughs> if you have a background color, the loader, and if you have the main action, then it would be there. So how do we make these elements load first, instantly, before everything else? Well, it's actually just inlining the HTML and the styles of these most important elements. So it's actually as simple as that. This is just to show you that if in a few lines of code, you can do this design of an app shell. Now, my last tip for you is to continuously validate with Lighthouse. Lighthouse helps you identify and fix common problems for your site's performance, accessibility, and more. And it's right there in your browser, in the Chrome browser. So what it does is that it gives you a score for progressive web app, performance, accessibility, and best practices. It's like a personalized checklist that also tells you how to make this score better. Another nice tool to use is also Calibre. Caliber runs Lighthouse on every code change, and it, it can know over time what made your site slower, or maybe who made your site slower in your team. So this is uh, another very, very useful tool. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. What about iOS? So the good news is that, drums, Service workers are finally being developed on Safari. Yes. And it's going to be available in the next release. And another good news is that the Web App Manifest is also going to be available in the next release, which is great news. For now, what we could do is that we can save a progressive Web App to the home screen, but without the App Install banner. So it's still buggy because it's still in development, but it's going to work. And the other thing to keep in mind is that iOS doesn't have a hardware back button. This is a really important thing to know. And basically, if you go into a page that doesn't have a back button, you're basically stuck there forever. So the solution for now is to add a back navigation everywhere on all your screens until Apple fixes it. <laughs> so here's my PWA design checklist to always keep in mind. Follow native-like patterns to make sure you have app-like experiences. Brand your app with the theme color and the icon and everything in the app manifest. Adopt an offline-first strategy. Always give immediate visual feedback. And validate with Lighthouse. And with that, we can truly build amazing web experiences. <laughs> if you want to see some PWA inspiration, check out pwa.rocks and Outweb. They have a pretty good collection of progressive web apps. And they are both progressive web apps as well. And here are the people I recommend to follow to stay up to date with progressive web apps. These are the same people that I was by inspired by to create this pre uh, presentation for you. So make sure to follow them. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And make sure to follow me on Twitter. And feel free to chat with me later in the hall. Thank you. <laughs>